What's happening, burgeoning musical geniuses? Jazz trumpeter and composer Bobby Spellman here. And if this makes you feel like this, then stick around, because today I'm going to unlock the mystery of how to read chord symbols on this episode of... Theory with Bob. Our standard system of chord symbol notation was fairly ingeniously devised to make it easy for a musician to be able to quickly interpret the harmony on a lead sheet or on a piece of sheet music of any kind. Whether you are a harmonic instrumentalist, like a keyboardist or guitarist, and you're playing an accompanimental role, or whether you're a horn player like me and you're going to use the chords to be able to improvise a solo over a piece of music, it's an important skill to be able to quickly identify what's going on in the harmony based on the chord symbols. Now, despite how nice of a system this is, it's totally unhelpful if you're unfamiliar with the meaning of each of these chord symbols and some of the various extensions and some of the shorthand that we use when writing chords. So, I would like to dive in today and get you started on being able to interpret these chord changes and over the series of uh, episodes, of a couple of episodes, before long you will become a pro at being able to identify chords and interpret chord symbols on a piece of music. So without further ado, let's dive right in and we're going to start with the most fundamental chord we have and that is our classic C major triad. Now the triad is the foundation of our harmonic system and just as it's a simple chord consisting of the one, the three, and the five of the scale, the chord symbol notation is similarly simple. If you're looking at a piece of chord notation and you see just a letter name, that will indicate a major triad. Once again, that's going to be the first, the third, and the fifth of the major scale, regardless of whether you got a C major, D flat major, D major, E flat major, that chord is going to be indicated by just the letter name. And now, chord symbol notation as we look at it in pop and jazz does not indicate what voicing you would use. So you could use any inversion of that chord, but what you do know is that you've got a major triad and you, the root note is going to be whatever the letter name of the chord gives you. So a C major is gonna have a C as the root, D major is gonna have a D as the root, E major is gonna have an E as the root, et cetera, et cetera. Now, before we move on to our minor triads, you should know that uh, under almost all circumstances, a major chord is going to be notated by just the root note of the chord, but there's an old school approach in which you can also indicate a major chord by including a triangle after the root note. So if you ever see just a root note written with a triangle afterwards, that indicates a major chord, and that's gonna look like this. All right, now moving on, but staying in the realm of triads, we have the second most common triad that you're going to run into in written music, and that is the minor triad. Now, you'll know that a minor triad includes the first, the minor third, and the fifth of the scale, and it will be notated simply as, if I'm using C as an example, C, M, I, N. If you just see C minor written M, I, N, now it could be any chord, it could be D flat minor, D minor, E flat minor, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you see that M-I-N, that's going to indicate a minor triad. Now, another very common way to notate a minor triad is with a minus symbol. So you might see C minus, and that will simply indicate that you're going to play a C minor triad. Now, in folk, rock, and pop music, it's common to see a lot of major and minor triads in a piece of music. But in jazz, we tend to spice up these triads with some extra notes. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to add these extra notes to your triads and what that will look like in chord symbol notation. So let's return to our regular old C major triad. If we wanted to add the sixth note of the scale to that triad, that gives us what's called a C6 chord. That sounds like that. What a delightful chord. Mm -hmm. Now, a C6 chord is simply enough, simply written as C6. It'd be the same thing for a D6 or an E6, etc., etc. All right, if you want to apply that same principle to your minor chord, you can get your C minor triad and add a 6 to the top of it, giving you a C minor 6. That could either be notated as C M I N 6 or as C minus six. Either way, that gives you the C minor triad with the major sixth of the scale. 
another delightful sounding chord. All right, returning back to our C major triad, if a C6 indicates that you're adding the sixth degree of the scale to the chord, then it would stand to reason that a C7 would include the seventh degree of the scale. However, that would be incorrect. A C7 chord will always indicate a C dominant seventh or a C major triad with a minor seventh on top. And that's this sound here. Very typically your C7 or whatever it happens to be, dominant seventh chord, will resolve to the one chord in a piece of music, which oftentimes occupies the place of the five chord, resolving to the one. Or in the case of a blues or a lot of uh, blues oriented funk tunes, things of that nature, that dominant seventh chord could be the one chord itself. Either way, if you see simply written C7, that's going to mean a C major triad with the minor seventh on top. In this case, it's going to be C, E, G, and B flat. Now that could be, again, based on any root note. So it could be D7, E flat seven, etc. In all of these cases, it's the major triad with a minor seventh on top. All right, now we can apply that same principle to the minor triad. So if you wanted to play a minor triad with a minor seventh added to the top, that would be indicated as C, M, I, N, seven, or very often C minus seven. That gives you the C minor triad with a minor seventh on top. Now that chord can either be the one chord in a minor key, or it can serve as the two chord in a two, five, one. Or it could also be the three chord, the six chord, the four minor, the five minor, just about anything in a modal tune. The possibilities are endless. All right, returning to our C major triad, what if you want to indicate a C major triad with a major seventh on top? Well, rather than C7, which would indicate a dominant seventh, C major seven is going to be written C M A J seven. Another common notation, although less common now and kind of an old school approach, is to write C triangle seven. And that will give you a C major seven chord. So if any time on a piece of music you're looking at it, it's got a major seven, whether it be C major seven, D flat major seven, D major seven, E flat major seven, what you've got there is the first, the third, the fifth, and the major seventh of the chord. We can apply that same principle once again to the minor triad. And now we've got a C minor triad with a major seventh. And that chord is indicated C minor major seventh. So C M I N and often in parentheses M A J seven. And once again, that indicates a C minor triad. That's the first, the minor third and the fifth plus a major seventh on top. And that's a lovely little chord you might notice at the beginning of Miles Davis's Solar or at the end of your favorite spy movie theme. All right, before we wrap this video up, I wanted to make one more quick point about standard chord symbol notation. The chord symbols that I've described here tend to be the most common way that we will write uh, major, minor chords, etc., etc. But over the ages, there have been many different ways to write these chords. Most of them are pretty intuitive, but I wanted to cover some alternative approaches really quick before we finish the video. So, a major chord uh, can sometimes be written as a capital M or a capital M, capital A. Uh, similarly, a minor chord can also be written as a lowercase m or a lowercase m i. Now, one of the reasons that we don't use that so often anymore is that differentiating between a capital M and a lowercase m when reading a piece of music quickly can be somewhat challenging. So it tends to be a little bit more clear if it's written out as M-A-J or M-I-N. But if you're reading a lead sheet and you happen to notice a small m or a large m or an M-A or an M-I, uh, you can probably deduce this, but this will indicate a major or minor chord as well. There may be some other symbols that people use, uh, but these are certainly the most common that you will run into. All right, so quick summary, that gives us major and minor triads. Major is just written as the letter name, minor is either M-I-N or a minus. After that, you can add a sixth to your major chord to give you a C6, or a sixth to your minor chord giving you a C minor six. If we want to go up to seven chords, you can have a C dominant seventh written as C7, or a C major seven, still C major triad with a major seventh on top, or you might have a minor triad with a minor seventh, indicated here as C minor seven or C minus seven. Or you may have a little extra 
uh, spice to the chord and have a C minor triad with a major seventh on top indicated as either C, M, I, N, M, A, J, seven, or often you'll see the combination of the two old school symbols. You'll see a C minus with a triangle over it. That's another way that this might be indicated. So if you see something that looks like this, you're also dealing with a C minor major chord. All right, that gives us all the chord qualities with the major and minor triads and various sevenths. In our next episode, we'll talk about various extensions, including nines, elevens, and thirteens, as well as flat nines, sharp elevens, flat thirteens, etc. And then from there, we'll get into some different uh, approaches to the fundamental chords and some more advanced chord symbols that you might run into as you're reading music. All right, gang, I hope this helped in your quest for musical excellence. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And stick around for some more episodes on interpreting chord notation. All right, everybody, have a wonderful time practicing, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya. Theory with Bob. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it helped in your understanding of the musical world and in your pursuit of the majesty of musical self-expression. If you like this video, you can let us know by giving it a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more musical education videos going forward. You can also follow me on Instagram at Bob Spellman for some more musical fun. The Ridgewood School of Music is now accepting new students online as well as in person in the Brooklyn, Queens and greater New York City area. You can find us on our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com or you can send us an email at ridgewoodschoolofmusic at gmail.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can, try to set you up with a great teacher for the kinds of music that you're looking to study. All right, gang, well, thanks again, and until next time, happy practicing. <laughs>